during this second phase of replication of T4 phage. Now let's talk about the assembly of T4 bacteriophages. Now before assembly, they must produce all the different proteins required for the assembly. Proteins majorly important as called capsid proteins, called accessory proteins, and called scaffolding proteins. Now these three proteins are major and most important proteins for uh, giving the structural property to the bacteriophage. And we obviously require connector protein, proteases, and terminase to help the process to guide. Okay. So in this case, in the very beginning, in the formation of procapsid, it requires three proteins, capsid proteins, which will be arranged outside, then the accessory and scaffolding proteins. Now, scaffolding proteins will guide these accessory proteins to be attached with each other to make an inner core, and then the capsid proteins will be added in the outer core. Once they produce this kind of arrangement, we will be calling it as a procapsid, and it will be having a small pole-like structure here, which is called connector. Now this connector is really important. Now as the capsid protein proteolized and remove the delta domains from them and then connector will come here. So scaffold proteins must be removed because they are not the part of structural integrity. They are only helping this organization. So then they will be proteolized using protease enzymes and they will be cut away. Then what we get is a procapsid which is a processed procapsid after cutting the scaffolding out. Now in this pro processed procapsid pro pro there is a channel formed form using connector molecule or connector protein segment. Now, <coughs> at this particular procapsid state, it begins the packaging of DNA. Now, as the DNA packaging will be going on, this head will be matured more. Now, as it is going on in this case like that, then it will <coughs> bring this uh, it will bring this DNA and the guide molecule is also important in this case and the guide protein for pumping the DNA inside the head will be added by this <coughs> by this Terminus proteins, which is having a helicase-like activity, it will it will wrap and move this DNA very fast using the energy getting from ATP hydrolysis in this case, and it will be pumping the DNA inside. Once the DNA is being pumped inside, during that point, they get more and more accessory proteins coming in, and they'll be added to the outer membrane or 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 what we call it capsid proteins from outside, and the head is being matured and more and more. And at this particular place, when every DNA is being inserted, it will be packaged properly. It is ready to attach to the tail and fibers, and then it will be called as a matured head. Now the head full of DNA is three percent longer than the genome of actual genome size. Because the, this is due to the uh, terminal redundancy, which is like simply the permuted molecules with repetitious ends in both these directions. So 1, 2, 3 and end with again 1, 2, 3. Similar like that. So for that reason, it will be packaged slightly extra, which is 3% extra inside. Right? Now, now the tail assembly. Now the tail and base plate assemble separately. Now the base plate is constructed of 15 gene products. And then after the base plate assembly, the tail fibers are next attached to the base plates and the tube tail and the, and the tail tube is built on the base plate. So as you can see base plate is the base, that's why it's called the base plate because base plate is the first thing, then the base fibers are attached to it, then the tail tube is start to build onto this base plate. And as the base plate and tail tube is built, they will come and they'll be attached to this viral head. After this attachment, the seed is assembled and around the tail tube. That's how the tail is assembled. Once the tail is totally and completely assembled, I mentioned it wrong. Once the tail is completely assembled, the tail will be there and it will be directly and randomly attached with the phase head. Now, this attachment of phase head with the tail is, is a kind of random. Nothing can be predictable in this case. Now, once they, they have attached this head with these tail particles, they have produced this mature phase particles or virion, which can be infecting. Right, which can be infecting, which is getting the infectivity property uh, from now on. And once they <coughs> reach a particular threshold of phage inside the bacterial host, they will burst the cell open and release outside. Usually, in this case of T4 phage, the burst size is 300. That means when they reach 300 or more phage particles inside the E. coli cell, they will kill the cell and will be released.